Hi, I am Dr. Kim Sage. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. I think I'm losing my voice. This is my third video today, but I want to make sure I get them done so I can edit them and get them loaded this week. So if you're new here, this is part of a series called Wildly Loved. And within that series is this mini series called What is My Trauma Type? Where we're going to go through the trauma types of fight, flight, freeze, fawn, collapse and submit, and attach, cry out for help. And if you're just new today, please check out the videos I've already posted this week uh, based on the fight, flight, and freeze responses. And today we're going to talk about fawn, which is such a common one, I think, for many of us. And basically this response, like all of these responses, is really meant to help us deal with our feelings of abandonment and alienation and or neglect, lack of emotional safety, and really our attempt to get our needs met in some way in childhood. And so the fawn type has learned that the, the way to stay safe and to get our needs met is to take care of everyone else and meet their needs. And so what we really believe is that we have to sacrifice ourselves. Pete Walker says, and that is in this book, which I'm using this week, uh, Complex PTSD from Surviving to Thriving, highly recommend it, is that the price of admission to relationships is to leave ourselves at the door, right? To say, oh, I don't, I don't have any needs, you know, what needs do I have? But I'm really good at taking care of your needs. And we usually are pretty good at it. And so we've learned to mind and mood read around others, to rotate around them. And the caretaking has served us well. Because in our childhoods, in many regards, we had parents who kind of exploited that part of ourselves. We're often very you know, empathic and kind and loving. But the parents said, yeah, why don't you be my best friend and let's discuss all my life's issues or my relationships. Or why don't you also raise your siblings, right? Or let's have some enmeshment here where there's no real separation between me and you and I can talk to you hurtfully and say whatever I want and then turn around and try to be a loving parent and like mind screw you. It's, it's such a complicated dynamic. And Pete says oftentimes in this, in this pattern, if this is your like first or second position, that you may have had a parent very likely who was, I would argue, somewhere on the narcissistic or borderline or immature spectrum where they tended to parentify you because it is not just narcissistic parents that do this. Parents who lack awareness do this. And we all make mistakes, but we're talking about long-term patterns. And so in some cases, these kids learn to entertain and be the jokester and keep everybody happy. And, but at the core, it usually comes out of making it clear through, you know, fear induction or shame that you don't get to have a separate sense of self. Your job is to revolve around me, and then I will make sure you get your needs met. And so as a result, a lot of these people, uh, these, those of us who have this style, have some parts of us that are that very wounded inner child. We have some places where our development is a bit arrested. It's not been allowed to fully grow and evolve. You know, it kind of got stuck or blocked in certain parts of development. And so that can make it difficult. And the distortions with Vaughn are that we have to merge, which I would argue is enmeshment, to connect, and we have to grovel to be safe. We have to, you know, grovel is such a ugh, kind of yucky word, but it's like, I have to make sure that you're good for me to be good. And the hard part about this one is that most of the world says, oh, you're a caretaker, great, come on in. And who loves that most? Narcissists, people who have more narcissistic traits um, can appear very stable and very, you know, very uh, initially containing, but they love a, a good caretaker. A, because, you know, you, you're taking care of them, and B, because you'll caretake all the things in the relationship they don't want to deal with that you're probably good at, you know, whether it's parenting or the job or, or the house or whatever. And so, as a result, there are some detrimental dynamics, as, as Pete talks about, with having the style. They are to be what he calls codependent, or we use the word codependent. I don't love the word, I don't like the codependency concept as it relates to attachment theory. I do think it's more appropriate for substance abuse. And I just feel like this word doesn't really honor, it kind of pathologizes that we're, we, we had to do these things to get our needs met. So I'll, I'll probably come talk about that more later. But the idea of, I like to think of it as a caretaker. We can be more in servitude to others. We can definitely lose ourselves through being people pleasers and doormats, 
not knowing how to self-advocate, to be assertive and stand up for ourselves. We can be what he calls, you know, social perfectionists. We're trying to always get it right or the parentified child. And the bottom line is that, you know, we're not able to bring our, our full selves into relationship. For many different reasons, we've learned to rotate around others. And I think you can really see this in a more anxious or disorganized pattern of attachment where you learn to really read the mind and mood of others, as I said. And so it's really hard to break because don't forget, like I keep saying, your nervous system, which is that polyvagal theory idea, sets the stage for your attachment system. They're wired together. And so it's not just in your mind you think, oh, I'm gonna take care of them and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna read their mood and mind. You are just doing it. You're always assessing facial expressions, tone of voice. You're highly sensitive to those things and to shifts in those things. Because like all of these, our goal is to provide safety and protection, to read threat and to prevent danger, and to deal with our feelings of our, our losses around intimacy, around the, the lack of our ability to be safely accepted and honored and vulnerable in a more reciprocal dynamic around intimacy. And also this, you know, being a caretaker is a great way to avoid intimacy. Why? Because I'm, it looks like we're close. I'm taking care of you, but I'm taking care of you. And there's often not space for you to take care of me in that dynamic. And, or I've chosen somebody, like I said, who is happy to let me take care of you. And so that keeps me away from having to really deal with, you can really, really hurt me, or I have to really show up and, and be vulnerable. There's like a wall there. Now it might seem like I am, but trust me, if this is your style, there's a wall there when it comes really down to it. Or maybe there is no wall and there's no, there's too much of a, a boundarylessness and there's no self-protection. I, I think that happens as well. But the bottom line is those aren't really healthy, balanced, I like, actually don't like the word healthy. They just aren't really balanced dynamics and integrated dynamics. And that's what we want to work on. And so what do we need to do to heal? We want to work on understanding that it was never our job to keep our parent happy and, and deal with all their feelings and moods and emotions and their mind. And that is a huge part of what I talk about um, really on all, all of the videos I make, whether it's on TikTok or here, because I truly believe that we just thought that's how it was. And especially in more borderline type families where it's not always bad and we sometimes get our needs met this caretaking and like, this is just, this is just how it is. Yeah, I know it's kind of toxic, but like, but when it's good, it's really good. And yeah, it's bad, it's really bad. And so that can make it really hard for us to feel even entitled to being a separate self and to be entitled to not be a caretaker. We want to understand the price we pay. Often our health is, you know, our mental and physical health are impacted because we're not taking care of ourselves. We need to work to shrink the inner critic who tends to listen more to others rather than self-advocate. And so we want to learn to say no more and to say, I don't, that doesn't work for me. And no, 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 thank you. I'm not doing that. You know, I, I won't be doing that. Um, and learn to set boundaries around what we will do and what we won't do. And the first thing is that I've discussed in all my courses is like, you have to get clear on who you are and what matters to you, what your values are, what are your boundaries? It's, it's, it's surprising how many things we need boundaries around from our physical body, to our relationships, to our pets, to our homes, to our cars, to our things, right? To our jobs. It is, it is really crazy how many things that when I start to do in my workbooks and all my courses have workbooks, I have this whole thing on like, what are your boundaries? And people have said like, I didn't even think about that, right? And so it really is profound to understand because we have to feel entitled to them. And with this fawn dynamic, we often don't. And then learn to tolerate and hold the price we pay inside when we speak up, when we set boundaries. You know, the truth is that you don't just set a boundary and feel great. And I always say, when we set a boundary with people that we've had like long relationships with, they don't tend to say, oh, well, thank you so much. Like, that was great. Do more of that. They tend to push back. Well, why not? Well, what do you mean? Right? Not even if they are unhealthy themselves, but we just, we're not used to that. And so that can feel like sharp, you know, sharp pain inside. Oh my God, I made someone unhappy and they're mad at me. And so never mind, forget it. We want to work to tolerate those feelings. We want to do grief work like in all of these and deal with really where a lot of that pain first, you know, uh, formed in childhood. And we'll talk more about grief work later on, but it's really important to understand that there are some things that you just didn't get and you did the best you could. 
but now you might be paying the price and sacrificing your own well-being in relationships. And I'll tell you where you really feel it too is when you feel resentful and you just feel like no one works as hard as you do, no one appreciates you, no one sees what you do. And yeah, there, you know, there are some thankless jobs. I think that parenting is meant to be thankless. Our kids aren't supposed to be like, well, thank you so much. Although I will say they often get there later in childhood and adult, I should say adulthood. But you know, you can't have a child and expect to be like praised for what you do. It's, that's not what's supposed to happen. But it's okay to feel inside like, you know, not to be, be uh, appreciated. And, you know, you're, of course, if that's your, that's your thing, I think it's important to teach our kids that everything is not just, in, they're not entitled to everything and that they should learn to be grateful and, and reciprocal and have gratitude and things like that. I'm just saying that deep inside, if, you know, you don't set boundaries and you feel resentful all the time, which I have done because I didn't want to be that yelling parent, I have to learn to tolerate what it feels like when they're not happy with me. When I'm not asking for something crazy, I'm asking for them to do something that is absolutely appropriate, for example, or in other relationships, right? So we have to learn to tolerate what it feels like inside to not be the people pleaser, to not be the caretaker. That's gonna increase our feelings of our own vulnerability, our own pain, our own wounds, which are basically the things we've been avoiding by being caretakers and by fawning behavior, right? So that is the fawn response. I will talk more about this, as I said, in more videos next week on some combo types we can see in our trauma types. But I'd love to hear what you all think about this type and if you do these things too and where you notice them. And I, once again, I'm just so grateful you're here. Please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell if you're new. And that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. So. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful you're here. Please, please, please do not forget how truly worthy you are of healing. I know like I'm just some person on the internet, but I'm telling you that you are. You are worthy of being wildly loved inside and out. Even if you were wildly unloved, it's never too late to start to heal your life. So thank you so much. Please stay safe and well, and I'll see you guys, um, I guess Monday. I think this is probably Friday by now. Even though it's, I'm making this video, I think it's Wednesday. I will see you next week. Okay, take care. Bye, guys.